gold beers. Me. Unusually, I worked with the agency on the original concept for this brief. I came up with the idea of adults speaking with the voices of little kids. I worked very closely with creative director Trevor Robinson, and we realised the best way to make this work was for it to be unscripted. It's just funnier that way. So the client needed some convincing, so with the help of my own kids, I made this test film. Why it's a love heart? My heart would beat so fast. My heart would be a bazooka, so it would go and then blast everyone off their feet. My uh, favourite ones are the rings. The agency set the script in the library and wanted to bring in an antagonist, who in this case was the librarian, who starts out looking very um, stern, but turns out she's just an excited little kid like the rest of them. The backbone of this campaign is the authenticity of the kids' delivery. So first I needed to cast the right kids, um, which turned out to be in Chicago, um, and work with those kids to get the narrative right. And once we've got those authentic deliveries, then we go back in and um, edit the scripts, the vocal scripts. So it's a little bit of a back to front production process. Once we get the script, um, in good shape and the client has bought into the script, I need to cast the right kind of actors. So what I'm looking for is actors who can bring or imbue a childlike quality to the performance rather than acting in a childish way. It's a kind of very fine line between having a sort of childish quality to them and becoming caricature or too silly. Also, I have to find actors that can lip sync. I have been amazed at how some people just can't do it. Well, I'm very happy with the cast and the performances um, in this spot, and I love the cinematic look and feel. I love that when it opens, it just delivers more of a surprise when they start speaking. And I just love the way that the location adds another layer, this ground location emphasises the absurdity of the kids' voices in that space. Tom? Yeah? Can you show the latest version, please? Yeah, I can. New version is coming up right. My first impressions of this script was that I'd seen CGI monsters in uh, commercials before, but I really liked the idea that this guy was a kind of personification of IT misery, which is certainly familiar to me, I'm sure it is to many of us. Um, and I also really enjoyed the challenge of working with the CGI character. So I wanted to approach this, that although the situation or this creature is, there's something absurd about that, that it somehow just felt really ordinary. I wanted to make it feel that we dropped in on a real office with believable characters. I found Alan, Tom's character, who's probably about the second from last guy that came in uh, that particular casting session, often happens that way. Um, so I was really looking for this, um, physical performance and Alan completely nailed it. I knew we had our guy. But with this film, I wanted to give the impression that the glitch and Tom's character were old enemies, so they were kind of familiar. So in the performance, it's a bit, oh, you again. Um, and I just love that there's this antagonism between the two of them. The challenge with CGI is getting the eye line just right so the interaction works. Um, of course the glitch doesn't exist, so I achieved that working with a special effects supervisor and a toy. I think I had uh, Kermit the Frog toy, and this gave the actors something to work with. Um, the other challenge was that although we shot this in London, the CGI guys were strangely enough based in Peru, in Lima. Long story, won't bore you with that, but anyway, I was still able to work closely with them. We worked together to get those interactions just right, but I think our actor Alan um, absolutely nailed his performance. So the inspiration for my short film came from originally a number of documentaries about sperm donorship. Just the whole concept of that there could be countless half siblings around that don't even know each other. So it gave me the idea for um, these mums that met up in a playground and got chatting away and it turned out that the kids were practically identical. So that's the kind of setup premise to it all. Of course, when you're making a film, you've got far longer than a commercial to, which is normally 30 seconds or even less sometimes, to flesh out the characters, story arcs and scenes. 
Um, it's quite a leap from telling a story in 30 seconds. Um, but I think my commercial experience really helps because I like to approach each scene so that it has its own funny concept or unexpected twist to drive forward the narrative and the story. Probably the biggest challenge is the lack of or very low budget, um, but that's balanced out with complete creative freedom. Um, and thankfully I've had a fantastic producer to make it happen and a great passion project and a great script. Thankfully, attracts a really strong cast and crew, which it did in this case. So we were also very lucky with the weather, considering we shot it in the UK. When I work with actors in long form, I'm able to give them um, their backstory. Funny enough, I sometimes like doing that a little bit in ads so that they got the complete narrative context. A lot of actors love that and all they ask for that. So that's that works really well. When you've got time and you're making a film, I also love to give actors the opportunity for their input and ideas. Uh, good actors can really enhance a script, um, give them opportunities to improv and what have you. Funny enough, those takes are the ones that often end up in the cuts. Um, and again, I often like to do that when I'm shooting ads anyway. Who's the Daddy did really well on the festival circuit. Um, it's had over 14 festival selections, picked up three awards in the best comedy category. I've actually developed the film into a comedy series. If I'm honest, that was kind of my plan all along anyway. Yeah, I'm in talks with the production company, so fingers crossed, Desi.